It is the one and only Issa Ray. Now the skin is skinning, the hair is laid, the dress is dressing. You look stunning. Do you feel as stunning as you look? Um, I'm just trying to get on your level, Laverne. Every single time you just slay, you eat everybody up. So thank you. I'll take the I'll take the compliment from you. So I feel great now. You're in three films that are nominated. Every film you um, did in 2023 are nominated for Oscars. What is the Issa Rae touch? Like we need that Issa touch to get our Oscar nomination. Uh, cast me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say that I'm a good luck charm, but I am wearing green for good luck. So I just want to send a message out there that if you want to get um, nominated for the Oscar, cast me. Absolutely. Speaking of your look, what is the story of this look? Just stunning. Oh my gosh. So I got to work with uh, the amazing Alexandre of Ami, and they put this dress together custom. It went through so many different iterations to just mold to me. And so I wanted to mold. I wanted to feel like old Hollywood, and, and I feel like that. You are, you've become such a fashion girl. Like you clearly get into it. You're living it. You're feeling it. What has been the evolution for you since, you know, awkward black girl to like, you know, red carpet darling and fashionista? You know, awkward black girl was on the internet. We weren't really about the, the carpet life. And so I think over time, as, as, as I've had to step out more, I've developed the love and respect for fashion and, and designers. And so any opportunity to work with brilliant artists of all mediums and especially fashion, I'm going to take that opportunity. So I've, I've just been loving it. I'm obsessed with this brooch. What is the story of this look? Talk to us. Um, well, you know, we people dress up for the Oscars often. And um, this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful get up. This is Fendi. Just a little Fendi, Fendi at the Oscars. Yeah, a little bit of Fendi at the Oscars. It's uh, You look amazing, by the way. You look stunning. Thank you. Laverne, um, I, I don't know what else to tell you. It's, um, it, it's a fun situation and I like brooches. It is a very fun situation. Now, we heard that the cast of Barbie bonded a lot off camera. What was your favorite thing to do when you weren't filming? Um, we, de we, had, we had this Chinese restaurant, Imperial Treasure in London, where we went to all the time. And Margot, the one- the Imperial I, Treasure? Imperial, shout out to Imperial Treasure in London. <laughs> And the one day that we had, so I was supposed to pay, and I was kind of like treating everyone. Um, Margot like did the thing. She like left to go to the bathroom in the middle and paid for the whole thing. Oh. And I feel like not, you know, that hasn't really been talked about. She's such. So a you still owe her a dinner. I do, and she never lets anyone pay because she's incredible and generous and, and amazing. But that that's was my favorite memory. I heard she made everyone wear pink once a week or something. Talk to me about the pink days. Am I right? Am I miss? No, on Wednesdays we wear pink. On Wednesdays. So was this costume pink or your personal wardrobe you had to wear pink? It was, you know, everyone found their own way to bring the Barbie energy or the Kennergy out there. The Kennergy? The Kennergy, whether it was a sock or some, some people wore, you know, t-shirt or full out, you know, body suits, but we, we ran the gamut. It was a lot of fun being on it. Well, you're definitely bringing the Kennergy tonight. Have so much fun. Just, it's Oscar Sunday. Are you feeling the fantasy? Um, yeah, I love being here. I love being here. It's so many I, everywhere I look. It's people that I grew up idolizing and, and loving and I'm talking to one right now. I'm not that old. <laughs> Gosh, it was seven years ago. You won Best Actress for La La Land. You're back tonight as a front runner for your virtuosic performance in Poor Things. Is it sweeter being back this time and, and for this film that is so provocative and thought provoking? I um. It's truly just the biggest joy to get to be with everybody from this film because every single person on this, it's so detailed and yes. the world was so uh, specific and, and crafted with a lot, of, a lot of love and care. And so I think to just get to be with so many people from, from the film is like the best thing ever. We were just talking off camera about the film and I was, I was talking about her journey, her arc, um, Bella's arc to empowerment. And you said that she was always empowered. And I was just like, that was an aha for me about thinking about, even as I thought she was this infant girl in a woman's body, she, she always had a sense of empowerment. Can you talk a little bit about that? Cause I'm like, yeah, that's right. I, I just see her as someone filled with so much curiosity and joy. And, uh, and obviously this is a metaphor. This, yes you know, is, is not based on a true story no. and can't really happen. No. But that idea of, you know, if you were never small and fragile and you could explore the world freely, what would you be and who would you become if you were just kind of freely able to, to lean into to pleasure and to 
too much food and too much experience or not enough. Like, it, she just, she gets to experience everything in a way that I don't know that many people ever do. And so it was, um, yeah, it was incredible to play. Incredible. We have to talk fashion. What story are you telling me this look? Bella had sleeves and now you have like this lovely peplo. Yes, it's, um, it's, uh, I, I don't even know how to explain it. They said that this um, this print is kind of shell, or this fabric is shells, which I love. Um, and it's Louis Vuitton. We're so excited about Wicked. The trailer looks so opulent and so amazing and so incredible. What was the first song that you um, recorded for the film? I think it was I'm Not That Girl. That's the first one I did for the film. Um, and then we shortly after did the one we all know, Define Gravity, yes. Yeah, wait to hear. There's a snippet of you singing at the. If it, a snippet, I can't, girl. I'm like bits all the way through that that trailer, and then you have the the war cry. We call it. You know you're gonna tear it up. Now you are a fashionista. You're a fashion girl. The last time we saw each other was for our Vogue shoot for British Vogue. What wicked story are you telling with this look tonight? We wanted like a little nod to it, which is why we have a little green. But I I'm all about texture and wonderfully. You know, Nicola and Louis Vuitton, they work very well with me and they, they listen to my harebrained crazy ideas and we knew we wanted like a nod to it, but we also wanted to have this sort of like feeling, this real like witchy texture. So it's leather, it's like baby, soft. The it's ruffle, there's a ruffle train that's so sickening. Ah, and she sees her friend Danielle Brooks. Oh my God, Color Purple Reunion right here on the carpet. Up from Broadway to the Oscars, right here. Oh my gosh. This is great. This is so good. good. And then Laverne, huh? it's such a full circle moment. I saw them on Broadway three times in the color purple. Amazing That's to see you together. Guys. My career started with being in Orange is the New Black with you. Then I ended up being in Color yeah. Purple with yeah. you on stage. Right, right. Now you in your green. <laughs> it's almost time for Wicked Baby. <laughs> And Color Purple, we at the Oscars today. The Oscars today, and you're nominated, darling. You're here, finally here, from Juilliard, from, from the South to the Oscars. Can you, for everybody out there with a dream who may think that it's impossible, what do you have to say to everybody out there? It is possible. Dreams truly do come true. I'm a girl from Simpsonville, South Carolina. London, London. <laughs> we, you know, started from the bottom. Now we truly are here. Yeah. We're here. And so, yeah, I'm just, that can happen. It can happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fashion, what is the story of the look tonight? I look. Thank you. I'm wearing Dolce & Gabbana. <laughs> but can you get into these nails? Yes, I can. I know. I know you love it's a situation. Nail, nail story. Yes. Okay, can we zoom in on the nails? Yes, we did. So I have 26 on my nail because I'm the 26th black woman to be nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Mm -hmm. So I had to at least honor that. Whether I go home with an award or not, I will forever be the 26th black woman to be nominated for Supporting Actress. Amazing. What was the most difficult thing about, because you dug deep and it was gut-wrenching, your performance. Obviously, you did it on stage. What was the most difficult thing about filming it? I, girl, we were... The most difficult thing about filming it. <laughs> I mean, it was so much. I think I'm so happy right now. I can't even think about what's so been difficult because this moment is so major. It's all worth it. Every difficulty led you here, and you used every difficulty to turn in an iconic performance. Thank you for my flowers, Laverne. I love you so much. You're just golden. Congratulations. Flaming Hot is your directorial debut, and it is nominated for original song. Becky G's performing. How exciting is it for you for you to have your first film nominated for an Oscar? Oh, my God. I uh, I have goosebumps. I'm, I, I can't believe it because I can. You know why? Because Diane Warren wrote the song. Amen. So she's a genius, and Becky G's a genius, and their performance tonight you you will never be more proud to be a latino and a chicano but like mm -hmm. becky's thought and love that she put into this performance tonight is going to blow everybody away she has some special guests from inglewood so i can't wait for everybody to see you know we don't ever get this platform we people of color we don't really get this stage and so we wanted to bring our whole community with us tonight we wanted to thank everybody for watching the movie making it a success and uh it's just it's just been a ride all about the fans. You look stunning, as always. What is the story of this look? This necklace is gagging me. The black velvet is gagging me. You look so good. 
talk to us. Feel yourself, honey. What's the story of the look? Um, this is Tamara Ralph, which is like elegant. I wanted to do like elegant and, you know, sophisticated, you know, because I'm usually a little more. The diamonds. Talk about the diamond. This is um, Boucheron. Yeah, Boucheron. I'm like, is it? Yes. How great is that? We, and it's very modern. So I wanted something very modern um, and young and hip and, you know. I don't, you know, I don't decide any of this, by the way. It's my hair and makeup and styling. Ken, Alon, and Maeve decide everything. I just, I'm a Barbie doll, and they just put things on me. Coleman, we were just talking um, before we um, went live about our journey. I think I've known you for 20 years. I saw you for the first time in Scottsboro Boys on Broadway. You've been doing theater and television. You have an Emmy now, and now you're an Oscar-nominated actor. Is this the dream realized in this moment for you? I think it's it's a lot of the dream. It's not only the dream realized for myself, but I think for many of my peers as well. I'm a journeyman actor, and I'm someone who's been dedicated to the craft of just doing work that matters. And a lot of times, you know, I have so many colleagues to the left and right of me who don't get this shine. So I feel like this shine is for all of us to say, stay in it. Keep telling the stories you want to tell. Make spaces where there are no spaces. Advocate and own your power. I feel like I've watched you do that in our history of knowing each other. And I feel so great that I have so many colleagues that were shoulder to shoulder, you know, breaking ceilings, you know, you know, moving things and pushing the needle, moving things forward. It feels incredible to be in this space at this time. It's so beautiful. Rustin is incredible, but you were also amazing in the color purple as Mr. Like playing that, playing that, playing that banjo and, and he, his arc, I, the range that you were sh just showed in these two performances. What do you want people to know who maybe didn't know Coleman Domingo before this award season? What do you want them to know about you as an artist? Oh, wow. That I, that I'm very careful about what I, the stories that I tell. In every depiction that I, I know that I think people can see now, that I want to humanize all these men that I play, whether they're heroes or villains. I don't want them to just be, you know, uh, put, put in marble because they're uh, a hero or some sort of civil rights figure. And I don't want them also to be villainized because they are a hurt person hurting people. I want them to see that I, I care deeply about uh, depictions of black men in the world I, I in making spaces for women and in all of our communities as well that i'm i'm that, that's the person that i am and i feel like the industry has now has seen me in my fullest and see how i want to actually shape and reshape this industry with everything that i have speaking of shaping and reshaping things we have to talk about this look you have set a new standard for award season for men this season what is the story of the look the story of this look, this is sort of a culmination of looks for the season. And this is custom Louis Vuitton with a David Yerman jewelry and an Omega watch. And I wanted to just shine like a diamond. I wanted to feel, I have, I, have, I have these country western boots on too from Louis Vuitton, which is awesome too. Country and western, he honored Beyonce's country era. And maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe that's exactly what it is. I'm having a great time. And there's one of my colleagues. Ah! David Allen Greer. Thank you. Man. I voted for you twice. Twice? That's right. Can you do that? Yeah, well, I can. Uh, see, that's what, this is the kind of colleagues that we love. <laughs> <laughs> we love these spontaneous moments. How proud of, are you of him and what he's accomplished? Listen, Coleman has been building to this for several years. I know. Um, it's been amazing meeting him, befriending him, and working with him and watching him work. So I'm a fan as much as a friend. I really think he's great. And he ain't done yet. Now you're performing tonight, The Fire Inside from um, um, Flaming Hot. Are there any people that you're planning to lock eyes with in the audience to help you get through the performance? Are you singing to any like A-list actors tonight? I mean, we all know it's a packed house and I'm honored to be here, but I'm more excited about the special guests that I have on stage with me tonight and locking eyes with them and creating all this amazing chemistry because we're all going to be sharing an unforgettable moment. I'm an L.A. girl born and raised here and proud to be, but I had to bring a little bit of Inglewood to Hollywood, so I think you guys will be very excited. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm super excited. We have to talk fashion. Tell us the story of the look. I'm obsessed. Thank you so much. It's a little custom Vera Wang moment. You were sharing. We, we had to have the um, iconic sleeves, of course, but so happy, so excited. I was geeked in all my fittings. I literally was like at the verge of tears every single time. Her team is incredible. Now, your song, Shower, turns 10 years old in like a couple of months. Is there anything you're planning to do to celebrate the 10-year anniversary? Um, I'm 
mean, just celebrate life, celebrate family, celebrate all the sacrifice that it takes to get to this place, you know? I'm also dying because Liv Rock was right behind me and I... Another one of my um, Vogue cover, exactly. cover star, co-star. We all met each other, right? That's how you we met. so beautiful. You look so beautiful. The Dune 2 press run was a fashion, like a, like a the Fashion Olympics between you and your co-stars. What story are you telling tonight? You, this girl, you're letting us have it. Thank you, thank you so much. This was inspired by Botticelli's The Birth of Venus and Mr. Dior first created it in 1949 to 1950 and this is Maria Grazia's take on it. So I feel very lucky. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The history, the history, the jewels. Talk to us about the jewels. Oh yes, um, you know, just it's just a little, a little something from Tiffany's Blue Book collection, Under the Sea. Um, I just, I like that it's spiky, and I like that she moves. She makes me feel very like alive. She's spiky. She moves, and she makes you feel very alive. Now you were a surprise, sort of small role in, in, in Dune too. But if there's a third one, your character would play really a big role in the next one. How forward are you looking to a Dune three if it happens? I just love Denise so much, and the cast is so wonderful. Everyone's been so welcoming, and yeah, I cannot wait to get back to the desert. I'm excited for it. You're so beautiful. I'm You're so beautiful. Staring at your face. I'm like, uh. I'm staring at your face. Now, Furioso is coming out this year. I don't know when the date is, but two years ago, you said that you would need two years to recover from making that film. It's been two years. What is your takeaway um, from Furioso, and why was it so grueling for you? Oh, my goodness. I think those movies just invite in a certain kind of chaos, and it's a certain kind of crazy person that goes to make it. So mm. I feel a deep kinship with anyone who's been out in the wasteland in any of the films. Yeah, we're just, we're a family. Tonight is the night. I, I just saw an interview where you um, told a story, like she was, because if you don't know, Ryan's also an amazing actress as well. And she was the first in this couple, you've been together for 18 years, to get a big nomination. It was for a SAG, um, SAG Ensemble Award for Boston Legal back in the day. And you were like, in Sterling, apparently you said, I'm so excited to go with you. And then what did you say? <laughs> okay, not you going, what did you say with the girl? Come on, girl. Get her. Hi. Get her. I said that I was going to take my manager because we were going to use it as a networking opportunity. Now, when you got the Oscar nomination, did you, do, did you say the same thing to her? Child, please, I wouldn't be here. I would not be alive. She would have shanked me in my sleep, took the nomination I for herself, and come to the thing. Oh, you would have waited until I was awake? No, the shower. That's a real woman. Okay, I got you. Okay. Girl, okay, we're deep in the in your podcast right now. So, Sterling, you're, when you found out that you um, were nominated for this Oscar, you obviously have won two or three Emmys, a Golden Globe, SAG Award. You, but this seems to mean a lot to you. Um, can you talk about your journey as an artist and being here tonight as an Oscar nominee for the first time? I feel like I'm on cloud nine, you know? There, there's these things that you dream about as actors, moments that you wonder, like, if they'll ever come your way, what have you. Wouldn't it be cool to go to the Oscars? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a lot of fun? And now we're here. Like, I'm, I'm actually here. My wife would get mad at me sometimes because she's like, don't you want to go? And I was like, I, I want to go when I get nominated. And now I'm here. <laughs> and Laverne, I got nominated. <laughs> We're aware. It's real cool. I feel blessed. And this film is so amazing. What do you want to tell people? What do you hope the takeaway for the audience is with American fiction? Um, that, that black life is human life. That we are closer to each other than we realize. That oftentimes we try to other each other and make each other feel different and we can't, unrelatable. We can all relate to each other. We're all having a very human experience. So black, white, yellow, red, it don't matter. Like humanity is universal. So come through to see, see people. I'm lovely. How are you? Good to see you. It's been too long. You, met, you missed me? I always miss you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're presenting tonight. And uh, what a year for, for film. What an incredible year. What are you most excited about um, looking forward to tonight? Uh, I'm most excited about 
like what we do every Oscars, which is just a celebration of passion and hard work and commitment. And I thought there were some incredible movies, obviously, that came out. I love the Oppenheimer Barbie combination that came out. I think it turned our business upside down. I think what those guys were able to do, particularly Barbie, I love Barbie, especially what those guys were able to do, especially with Oppenheimer, to take that. It was a very inspiring movie to me. And plus, I, I know Killian and Emily is one of my best friends. So super excited for everybody tonight. Oh, I, I was just thinking about them. We were on strike when that film came out and they weren't able to promote it. And yet they were able to turn in this huge, incredible box office. Yes, I mean, think about that for a second. We were on strike, uh, couldn't promote it. And then that movie makes a billion dollars. And that is a hard subject matter that's very polarizing. It's why, in my opinion, directors have stayed away from it and studios have stayed away from it. And I thought Christopher Nolan and his wife, Emma, did a perfect, brilliant job. Perfect. Now, you are, are you in the live action Moana coming up soon. When is it coming out? What can you tell us? So live action Moana, we're going to start shooting that uh, towards the end of the year. Myself, uh, Tommy Kale, who directed Hamilton. Very excited about love that. Tommy. Uh, love Tommy. And before that, I'm doing a movie called Smashing Machine with Benny Safdie, who's going to write and direct with A24. And again, uh, I can't get enough of her. Emily Blunt will be my co-star in that. Ah! We love to see it. We love to see you two together. Have so much fun tonight. We love you. You're booked and busy, and it's such a blessing. It's so wonderful. Listen, stay. Lionel Richie, his great advice was George Burns told him, stay booked, kid. Stay booked. Stay booked. Uh, stay booked. Lionel Richie gives the best advice. He does the best. That's my guy. Uh, Uncle Lionel. I'll tell you at the after party what he told me. Oh. No, it's good. It's, yeah, we, yes. we just went another time, I would tell you now. Well, we got time and money on this. <laughs> <laughs> you got money. You. The Rock has money. <laughs> it's so good to see you again. Good to see you. I loved working with you. I loved working with you, too. That, that episode of TV changed my life. Well, it should have. You're an amazing actress, and people need to know you. I love you. Thank yeah. you. I, hey, you know, we got to keep the lights on. It's so good to see you on our screens, too. Nyad is such a powerful film about friendship, about determination. I didn't know her story, so I didn't know if she was going to die doing this. So I didn't want to look it up. So I was watching, and the, I, talk to me about working with Annette and how, and this chemistry that you guys have and the complicated relationship that you um, create on screen. Yeah, so two, two, two things that I wanted more than anything with this film. One was to work with Annette Benning and be her supporting partner. Supporting abs is what I call myself. And then um, Bonnie and Diana, the real Bonnie and Diana, who are just extraordinary people, extraordinary friends. You know, they were lovers many, many years ago, but they are family now, as that happens with our generation. And um, I just admire them so much, and, I, and they're such characters. I couldn't wait to do it. And uh, women in, in their 60s, and like they, 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 to get the idea that I'm going to do the swim at the age of 60 and to actually accomplish it, did it make you think differently about? I don't, I don't know how old you are, but it made me. You're 61. Okay, Jody's 61. I'm 51. Oh my God, I'm 51 and be 52 later this year. I got, started thinking a lot about aging and like what's possible for me as a woman as I age. Did, was that something that you thought about making this film? You know, I don't think about it a lot because I'm just busy doing stuff, but um, I can see it now, and especially Diana, the real Diana, who continues to astound me about what she does every day. And um, yeah, she, she did the final swim at 64, so it was, she wasn't even 60, she was 64. Um, lots of things are possible, and I didn't realize that I would be happier than I've ever been. And there's a kind of contentedness. I think it might be hormonal. I think something happens to you, and like something goes through your body where suddenly you're like, don't care. And uh, it makes all of life more precious. Hello, Kingsley. It's so lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. How's it going? It's going beautifully. Now, you play basketball kin in Barbie. If you were a kin in real life, what kind of kin would you be? Basketball kin. It's very much who I am. This is a character I identified with most out of anyone I've ever played. So you're a baller in real life? No, but basketball Ken is, is a different kind of fellow. We love that. Now, do people walk up to you and say, hi, Ken, since you've been in the film? A couple of times. A couple, a couple of, of times, times. Yeah, yeah. Now, what was it like? Greta Gerwig is such an incredible artist and director. What was it like working with her as an actor? It was, a, it was probably the most joyful, creative, open, fun experience I've had, you know, in my career. It was really wonderful. She's, she's a boss. Amazing. And yeah, it was like, yeah, she was just, 
She had so many brilliant ideas, and we just had so much fun. Yeah. Well, we heard you. the cast had a lot of fun, so we're at the Oscars. You're nominated for Best Picture. What are the after-party plans for tonight for the cast of Barbie? I don't know. I think maybe Warners are doing a party and there's something at Vanity Fair and then there's another couple. I just, there's loads of parties. That I'm not quite sure. I'm going to wait till we finish the show and then hear what's going on. Where are you going? Um, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you off camera. Maybe, we all, maybe I'll see you later. Maybe. Dwayne, executive produced um, Barbara the Barber of Little Rock, which is nominated for an Oscar tonight, all about this amazing man here. Dwayne, why was it important for you to be a part of this film? Well, getting a call from John and Christine, who's right back here, the, the producers of this. Um, you know, once I heard Arlo's story, um, it took me right back to the community that I grew up in, in Robbins, Illinois. Um, Arlo could talk more about it, but um, everything that he stands for, uh, everything that he is for that community is everything that we need, everything that we want to be. Um, true hero, real hero right here. Arlo, please talk more about it. Please. I, I just saw the film yesterday, and you talk about the um, wealth gap, the racial wealth gap, and the grants you provide and what you're doing at the banks. Can you tell people who may not know about you and your work a little bit about what you're doing, and then people should go and watch the film? Oh, absolutely. We, we emerged out of an unmet credit need in our community, and, and we're a community development financial institution, and they were put in place to, to be a bridge for the, for the wealth gap for those that couldn't access capital at traditional banks. And so we emerged out of that need 2009. Payday lending was prohibited, and our community members that come to our barber college needed loans. And so we rose to the occasion. And you said in the documentary that your mother, her service to the community deeply inspired you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. My mother was a social worker, and, and we lived in low-income low housing projects. And so she, she was always an advocate for not, not just staying there, and, but, but, but being a better uh, citizen to the community and also providing the help and resources and just encouraging those that, that needed encouragement. And so, you know, me watching her inspired the work today. That's incredible. Now, you all look amazing, but Miss Gabrielle Union looks incredible. Please tell us the story of this look. Oh, this is Carolina Herrera. Ow! And uh, one and done. The diamonds. What's going on with the diamonds? That's Tiffany, baby. That's Tiffany. And are you feeling yourself? I am feeling myself. I can tell. Yes. Hey, kids. Congratulations. Now, Mark, you're taking the stage tonight with the one and only Ryan Gosling to People, perform. Uh, yeah, I perform I'm Just Ken. Yes. Yes. Can you preview anything about the performance? What can you tell us? We hear it's going to be huge. It's an absolutely banana spectacle. You know, we're only going to ever get to perform this song maybe once with Ryan. He's kind of like put us all on his shoulders or Ken's shoulders or whatever. And it's it's really like we can't we were backstage before. Like, we can't believe we're a part of this. Like, so it's very exciting. This movie is nearing a billion dollars at the box office. It's breaking um, records on Peacock as far as viewing. This movie is so widely loved. Could you expect this? How does it feel to be part of such of something so huge? Well, I mean, we, when we saw the film, I think we felt the love that was in the film. And that's always like the first wave. And that felt really powerful and then as the film kind of started coming out and people start more and more people started getting into it that's when you're like wow this ended up being the f a phenomenon like we never could have imagined yeah now both for both of you when do you feel like just Ken and when do you feel like a 10 <laughs> well, I never feel like a 10, but... Uh, you don't feel like a 10 tonight? Oscar nominated? I feel like a, a, this is a good night. I feel like an 8.2, but that doesn't... That's exactly the number I was thinking of. That's probably why we worked. Yeah, it doesn't rhyme with anything, though, 8.2. So, uh, so no, it, this is incredible. We're super... I, I would run out of words. Too. Grateful, like it's just crazy. So you're already an Oscar winner, of course. For I was this, I just re-listened to Shala this morning. Oh my God, it's so epic. Does it take the pressure off when you already have an Oscar at home? I think the fact that we have the Oscar for Shallow is already beyond anything that we'd ever thought. So yes, it is just like it is just that is amazing, and we're just psyched and. Yeah. Hello, Paul. Oh, how are you, ma'am? Are you overwhelmed by all the activity here on the carpet? It's actually way more mellow than I thought it was going to be. It's yeah. actually kind of, you know, decorous and calm. I like it. Decorous. 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 I that sounds like a word your character in the holdovers <laughs> might decorous. use as a professor. I felt like that guy right as I said it. Yeah. Sorry. Now, this is not your first time working with Alexander Payne. 
It seems to be a good combo, right? You're back here at the Oscars. What's the best note um, Alexandra's ever given you? Oh, boy. Wow. He doesn't... Well, the great thing about him is he doesn't say very much. He says things like faster, slower, louder, funnier. And that's what he does. He'll do those. And that's what's great about him. Super simple. I love that. That's genius. That's genius. Really, really simple. I'm a big Billions fan, and I love that show, and there's lots of fans of Billions out there. What was that journey like? It's over now. What do you want to say to all the Billions fans? I can't be the only one. What do you want to say to everybody? I hope they, hope they liked the way it ended, because we were very concerned about how it ended. So I hope people liked how it ended. It was an amazing job. It was one of my favorite things. It was a crazy, crazy ride, but I really enjoyed it. And the fans were amazing at that thing. I loved all the people that I still love all the people who come up to me to talk about it. Now, if you were forced to chaperone someone for, you know, a holdover, if you had to, you know, do a holiday thing like your character, is there someone here tonight at the Oscars that you would love to chaperone? Wow. I think I think I would still like to chaperone Dominic Sessa, who's here. You know, who's he's here. lovely. He's such a lovely young man. Yes, I just want to hang out with him again. I just hang out with him as much as possible. What for your? What was the thing for you about your character in this film that like really that you want people to really take away most about this character, this film, and this journey? Well, I think that it's a good story about empathy and being open to whoever. You never know who's going to maybe change your life a little bit, and so I think that's an important thing. And being being empathetic and being willing to give of yourself fully to other people is a good thing. And uh, maybe even sacrifice your career in service. Yes, this guy does that. Then, uh, yeah, so, you know, being selfless as much as you can. Now, last year, you were famous for taking selfies with all the celebs. Is there someone you're looking forward to taking a selfie with tonight? Oh, absolutely. A lot is on my list, and I can't wait to uh, go up to them and tell them. Who's the top, top person on your list? Oh, uh, uh, Martin Scorsese. Uh, I, I love uh, yeah. Robert Downey Jr., Robert De Niro, uh, Ryan Gosling. I mean, I, got, I, I have a whole list, so, uh, so I can't wait to meet them. And uh, it's, it's so great to be here. So. You're, basically, you're all of us. We love that about you. Now, you in a new film called um, Kung Fu Panda 4. Do you want to tell us about it? Well, number one this weekend. Uh, Congratulations! With a box office of $58 million, it's my first voiceover, and I'm so proud of it. I've seen the movie a couple of times now, and it's really good. And, uh, and, and thank you to the audience for, for watching our movie this weekend and making this number one. It's incredible. You have not stopped working since you won your Oscar last year. You popped up in Loki. You have so many. What are you most excited about that's coming up on your um, roster? Well, I'm doing a movie for, well, first, I'm doing a movie for Universal Studios. Uh, it's called With Love. And, uh, and I fly out to Canada right after the Oscars. Amazing. Uh, so I'm really excited to look, you know, looking forward to being on the set again. Because I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't made a movie in a while, you know, with the strike that we had and, and now all of this. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We love seeing you on our screens. Have the best time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And, oh, by the way, you got to ask me what I'm wearing. Cause you... What is the story behind this look, Kiwi? I love this tux. It is a made-to-measure by Giorgio Armani. Oh. And uh, it's, yeah, I love it. The brooch, is it also Armani? Uh, no, this is Cartier, and I got the watch. And, the, you know, I wore Armani last year. So it, it's it's um, um, it's so nice to, to, to wear, you know, uh, Armani. It's very nice to wear Armani at the Oscars. Sandra, congratulations. Now, you've said that you're not used to all of the attention that you're getting now that you're a Best Actress Oscar nominee. Congratulations, and you're also in two nominated Best Picture films. What are your hopes for your career going forward after all this recognition? Oh, it never worked so much with hope. I think I'm just taking what I can, what comes my way, and I decide what's good for me and what not. And if so, nothing happens, then I'll do something else. So I'm just, I think I, I hope I can stay true to myself. That's, I think that's the most important thing. Just listen to your gut and you'll be fine. You look stunning. I'm obsessed with this shoulder moment. What is the story of this look? Tell us everything. This is Daniel Rosemary, Scaparelli, custom. And uh, yeah, he made it for me. And, uh, the jewels? The jewels is Cartier. Yes, girl. Best actress nominee in custom Scaparelli. Now, how does that feel, girl? It feels just amazing. It feels like a dream. <laughs> it feels just right. Now, you, I understand that your director did not tell you if your character was the murderer or not, but would tell you in 10 years. <laughs> are you hoping to get the information before? Are you, what do, you, do, do you think you did it or not? 
I really wanted to know, of course, because as an actor, you want to know it, how you want to portray someone. Yes. But then during the process, we figured, all of us figured, it would be nice to play with the question ourselves to kind of project it to the audience so that they can make all the movements that we make. And then, so I didn't want to know. This is your very first film, and now it's nominated for Best Picture. I know you got a lot of advice from Paul Giamatti. What's been the most surprising thing about going on this award season journey for you? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's it's all absurd. I mean, but I think, <laughs> for, to me at least, it's, it's crazy. But um, I guess the most surprising thing is just how uh, normal everyone seems to be. You know, like I, you know, didn't expect how these celebrities were going to be in person and how they are as people. But everyone I've met has just been really, really cool and, and been so gracious to me, you know, as this new person figuring this all out. Everyone's been really nice to me. So that's kind of been a, a really good, pleasant surprise through all this. I think it helps when you're in a really good movie by Alexander Payne, co-starring Paul Giamatti. People are going to be nice to you. Now, I, I heard that you want to be in a film directed by Bradley Cooper. He's here tonight. Are you going to try to meet him and maybe pitch, you know, a collaboration? You know, I don't have any ideas in mind, but, you know, if, if that conversation came about, I'd be, you know, all ears for it. Um, but, yeah, that guy, you know, whether I, if I got to just, you know, be close to watching him work, not even be involved in it, I, that would be a dream. So, yeah, big fan of him. <laughs> Me too. I love that as well. Have so much fun tonight. You only have your first time once, so just take it in. Are you feeling present? Are you feeling, are you breathing? I'm all here, yeah. I'm all here, and I'm just, you know, I think this is the perfect way to wrap this all up and then move on, you know, back to back to normal, some definition of that. <laughs> How special is it for you to be here at the Oscars with the message that you're um, putting forth in this film? Very special. None of us uh, told the story with this in mind, but the fact that we're here being celebrated, but most importantly able to really tell this story and have people understand why we told this story. The Academy bringing that attention to our film means everything. And I'm so happy to be here with Brittany and Sarah and Juliet. Brittany, why did you say yes to this film? Why was it important for you to be a part of this? Well, obviously it's a polarizing topic, but I think that Nazrin did a really beautiful job of shedding a new perspective on something that we might have preconceived judgment going into, and this was done in such an, um, an artistic way and not didactic, and it was just a beautiful way of showing a really interesting topic. What about you? What was your experience like shooting, working on this film, and the message, very important message of it? Oops. Um, I mean, it's been an, an incredible opportunity that Nazarene extended to us all. And um, again, it's, you know, being able to get involved in something that has substance and um, really resonates with people was very meaningful. Amazing. Do you want to say something to us, darling? You're so beautiful tonight. Thank you. Say hi Thank to everybody you. out there. Hi. 30 years ago, Living Single was airing on television. What is the difference between the success you enjoyed with that iconic show and the success you're enjoying right now with American Fiction? Well, it's 30 years apart. So that means that in my life, it's been 40 years that I've been in this business. And it's taken me this long to get on something like this and this carpet in this way. I'll be forever grateful to Cord Jefferson, who created the way, and Percival Everett, who did the original novel. Obviously, I'm older, and so I'm able to appreciate it and be grateful in a way that I think as a 23-year-old, it would have been a little different. Amen. That's so beautiful. Now, we know Christian Siriano designed your dress. Tell us how it was working with him. Well, for one thing, he's wonderful. I like what he stands for. I've always loved his career, Project One Way, but he also dressed women who normally would not be able to um, go and feel comfortable because no one would dress them. They had different types of bodies, and he said, I'll dress them. And so any man that does that and puts his, you know, shoulder to the wheel is my type of designer, and I'm very blessed that he did this. We love Christian. This film, American Fiction, it satirizes Hollywood and has a really important message about black representation. What is the most important thing for you about this film that you'd like people to understand as they watch it and contemplate it and have conversations about it? Well, representation matters. Stereotypes live long. They're enduring because we allow them to endure. And it forces us not to have to look at a f person in their full authenticity. And you know something about that. And we need to end those type of stereotypes and start to live a better life around what it is to be human. And that's what I think it achieves. What performances and films are you most excited and rooting for tonight? 
performances and uh, nominees I'm excited about everything I'm really just the whole thing everything it's just a perfect show it's all there to watch and to feel good about really now you look stunning tonight what is the story behind this beautiful look you're wearing tonight I'm honored to be wearing Rodarte they made this dress for me so so very right Celine this is your directorial debut and you are nominated for best screenplay. How does it feel to have all this recognition for your first um, film as a director? Well, I just feel like it is just a complete honor and I'm just so happy to be here and I couldn't, you know, when this movie premiered at Sundance, I didn't think that we would get to come here. So to me, it's just such a cool thing. Yeah. It's very cool. Now, your character in the film, though, oh, it's, there's something so gut-wrenching about his longing for this woman, this child that he knew when she was 12, but he's never not forgotten her. And it was such so touching. What did it, how was it preparing for this and playing this um, role in this amazing film? Well, I think half of it was live experience, but the other half was her uh, smart direction of uh, keeping me and uh, Greta and I apart. And the on-screen hug that you see within 24 years is actually our first time we actually hugged each other in real life. So the audience gets to experience that with us together, so, yeah. Okay, so it's the scene when you're, you're there and the husband's there and all of this, and you cut the husband completely out of the frame. I'm like, girl, your husband is there, what's going on? <laughs> that was with the intimacy and it was so complicated, and at the end, I don't want to give away the end, but it's such a beautiful film. For you, as a, as a, as a filmmaker, as a screenwriter, what did you? what is your message about this? Why did you need to make this film, and what were you trying to say to us about this, um, these past lives? Well, I think that the scene that you're talking about, the shot you're talking about, it is really connected to the, what the movie's about, which is that language is uh, culture, and the language is intimacy. And my script that I'm uh, nominated tonight for is in two languages, and it's very much about the way that you know, even in our own lives, there are different ways that uh, languages create uh, spaces that you don't uh, you don't expect that are completely magical time space that kind of exists just with us. You know, director of American fiction, the one and only Cord Jefferson. Cord, congratulations on this amazing accomplishment. This is your directorial debut, and here you are at the Oscars. Can you process this, and can you process the recognition and the impact this film is having? Uh, no, you know, we made the, I can't, it's hard. I, I, uh, we made this movie, uh, under not sort of like major auspices. We, we made it for, you know, relatively very little money. We shot it in 26 days. Um, the novel this was based on is, you know, two decades old. Uh, we just made it because we were passionate about it and we loved it. And I think that the momentum that the, the film has received and the, the, uh, awards and the the acclaim it's received is, is beyond all of our wildest dreams. We just wanted to make a, a small movie that we were passionate about and that that passion has been uh, rewarded and responded to with equal passion is, is we're all so grateful for it. It sparked so much conversation about representation, about um, what does it mean to be blacker, um, of all that, there's lots of things that we can take away from the film, but what is what is one or two things you'd like the audience to take away from this film um, as the writer-director? You know, I think that the, the thing that I've told everybody is I want them to take away a smile, you know. I think that I think that we've gotten, um, we've lost our ability to, to, I think we've gotten so self-serious about a lot of things, and I think that it's important to laugh in the most difficult of times. I think that's what makes us human is our resilience, and sort of like there's beauty in that resilience. And then also I think that, you know, one of the main themes of the film that I think is applicable to all kinds of people, which is why I think it's resonating with all kinds of people, is it's about um, people desiring freedom and the freedom to be themselves and the freedom to to uh, live their lives the way they, they want to live them and, and what human the strange things that human beings will do when they feel they aren't afforded that freedom to be who they want to be. And so uh, I hope that that's something that, that people can really resonate with and, and maybe something, you know, I'm too old to believe that a movie can change the world, but uh, but I think that what satire and what art can help do is cause people to think. And I think in sort of in causing people to think, they can they can change their own minds and sort of like the world changes that way, slowly but surely, hopefully. You've said that you were so excited and honored to finally work with Jeffrey Wright after knowing him for 25 years. What was the most surprising thing you learned about him shooting this film? I learned that he's got a wonderful sense of humor. Yeah, I knew he'd be down to play, and uh, but how light and joyful he was when we were attacking the script and playing and doing unexpected things. I loved his uh, his uh, spont spontaneity, you know. So yeah. 
The best actors always have that. We have to be in the moment. Now, this film has such an important message about stereotypes, about <gasps> representation. What is, what is the biggest takeaway, the one biggest takeaway you'd like audiences to have when they watch this film? The thing that I would love audiences to be left with after watching this film that deals with, with representation and identity is that we just got to normalize seeing ourselves and these types of stories under all circumstances as something that is part of life and not a once in a million time occurrence. But the, yeah. Now, this um, film is also about satir satirizing crazy Hollywood moments. Do you have a crazy meeting, Hollywood meeting that you've had in your career that you'd like to share with us? Uh, I gotta say the first, my first movie, uh, which happened to be Carlito's Way starring Al Pacino. And I didn't know what I was doing, but the next thing I know, my callback is with the great Brian De Palma. And I, really, I literally don't know what I did, except I pretended that I was driving a car and miming the steering wheel of it, you know? Um, and yeah, and I got the job. Diane. Your song, The Fire Inside, is nominated tonight, but last year you told me even though you got an, an honorary Oscar, congratulations, that you still want a competitive one. Where does The Fire Inside come from for you for an Oscar? I, do, well, I love doing this. The Fire Inside is, a, is passion, so I have a passion for writing songs that I it's, it's never going to go out because I just love doing this. I also I love writing songs for movies. Yeah. Um, my honorary Oscar does want a friend. I'm not enough for him. I, I thought I would be, but I'm not, and I think he wants a boyfriend. We are like a boyfriend. Now, Becky G is performing the song tonight. Did you give her any advice about performing at the Oscars? I am the wrong person to give advice about that. Um, she's going to, I went to rehearsal, she's going to knock it out of the park. It's going to be amazing. She's going to set the that stage on fire. Now, you've been nominated for 15 Academy Awards for your incredible songs, iconic, legendary music. Of all your 15 nominees besides The Fire Inside, which is your favorite? It's like asking which your I favorite know. kids are. Pick one. For different reasons. Um, this is one of them, Stand Up For Something, the song I wrote that Gaga sang, Till It Happens To You. Um, uh, because you love me, because I was thanking my dad when I wrote that song. There, there are different reasons. Yeah. For me, um, if it happened to you, and nothing's gonna stop us now, then just make a mannequin. One. And in the 80s, I've been nominated in, in five decades. Is that weird? Iconic. Five decades. Diane Warren, living legend. It's so good to see you again. You look fabulous. Thank you. I'm, I'm on brand. <laughs> you absolutely are. Have the best time tonight.